and welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I would do a cooking video. I'm going to make some cheese scones and then I thought I would do a bit of a vlog and a capture. So I hope you enjoy this video. Remember to give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed it and also comment below for what videos you've got to see next. For this recipe for the cheese scones you're going to need 225 grams of self raising flour plus extra for dusting, a pinch of salt, a pinch of pepper, cane pepper it says here, one teaspoon of baking powder, 55 grams of chilled butter cut into cubes, 120 grams mature grated cheese and 90 to 100 millilitres of milk plus one tablespoon for glazing. drive a faster car lay my troubles to rest blow the smoke through my cigarette city lights looking fine and I know this is my time now I'm gonna be myself or I could be someone else no one's stopping me now I'm gonna skip my breaks I'm gonna make myself I I started weighing out 225 grams of self raising flour. I tipped the tear away on my scale so it didn't weigh the bowl. As you can see, the flour went everywhere here. was to weigh out 120 grams of mature cheddar cheese that was grated. Now I already grate mine in the container as you can see so I just had to weigh mine out. I can't stand grating cheese every time you need it so I always have it pre-prepared in the fridge. Just added a pinch of salt as well as I decided to use the shaker for this as it was about the same measurement as a pinch of salt. I didn't have 55 grams chilled butter so I decided to use this baking marge instead which is designed for cooking anyway, so I thought I'd use that. Never once I told you no, told you no. Kept going. 
going like a marching soldier. I then added my 90 to 100 millilitres of milk. I actually put 100 millilitres in, which is far too much, and it made the dough too wet and it kept sticking to the counter. As you'll see later when I come to roll it out and cut the scones out. I then added 225 grams of self raising flour. It says to sift this in the instructions, so I sifted it. I'd also recommend getting a, cloth, a damp cloth ready to wipe over as this flour went absolutely everywhere. I'm just pouring in the salt and the baking powder now. I also sift that just like I did with the flour. the butter in and the cheese so I can start to make that into a crumble and blending it all in. I'm just blending it all in with my hands just using the fingertips so it doesn't get too warm. It will stick to around past your fingertips but I'll just scrape that off and try and blend it as best as I can. A little tip is to use your spoon first to blend it in. I wanted to use my spoon as it, I felt it was easier than just using my fingertips all the time and heating all the dough up. I then just scraped it off and used my fingers for the rest of it. I then just sprinkled some flour on the work surface so the dough wouldn't stick to the counter. I did need quite a lot of flour I found for this. So like I said earlier, it'd be well worth using less water so I think I had too much water in my dough. <laughs> As you can see it's all sticking to my rolling pin as there's far too much water in the dough. So next time I do one of these recipes I'm going to use less water. I'm just going to start rolling out the dough to get it the right thickness. I also think this is why my scones were so flat because I read it wrong in the instructions again. They should have been a bit thicker and I think I also used the wrong cut of it to cut them out. Posting pictures on the gram so other people know that we're more than friends. And ever since you came around, I've never been sober, always in my head. Met you
need to keep rolling up the dough into one big ball and rolling it out flat to make the best use of your ingredients. I then added some more flour as it was sticking to the counter once again. So I decided to add some more flour to stop this from happening. Promise you won't let me drown, 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 Cutting out the last few scones, it says it makes up to six in this recipe. Mine made more because they were so small, but next time I'd like to make them properly and make them a bit thicker and a bit wider. finished cutting out the scones I've decided to start having a little tidy up as there is flour everywhere and it says to get your tray out to put the scones on so they can be cooking on a warm tray. <music> I forgot to put the cheese on the tops, so I did this without filming it. I'm back now, I've just put the scones into the oven. So I'm waiting for them to do it, it says about 20 minutes. I just wanted to have a quick catch up with everybody um, on how I'm getting on. Sorry about that, I couldn't say. Because the way I contact them is they went a bit funny. Yeah, so anyway, I just want to have a catch up with everyone, with everything going on with the virus and stuff. And I just want to say that I have been feeling a bit low and a bit depressed about everything working in healthcare and my anxiety coming back. So I just wanted to tell people in case there's anyone else feeling like that, 
Um, I have gone back and got my counselling, started that again. I'm having six sessions for work and I'm going to update everybody on that. Um, this all started when I was bullied for six months in a care home locally to me. Um, but I'm not going to say too much about my poor mental health at the moment because I am hoping to do a video about that when I feel much better. Um, I hope everybody else is feeling much better about things and it isn't affecting people too much. I normally go see my grandma quite a lot as well, so that's been quite hard not seeing her in four months and only seeing her in the open spaces and in parks. It was also hard as well because a lot of my family now are working healthcare, so they're all aware of the virus and didn't really want me seeing certain members of the family. So that can make you feel isolated as well when you work in healthcare. I also want to say it's one of the reasons that I set up this YouTube, thinking with the virus and that, I know a lot of YouTubers have different health issues, but they join YouTube to reach out to other people like myself. And it's a great way to make new friends with other YouTubers, fans and followers. And I've really enjoyed the community so far, so I'm going to continue posting regularly on the Thursday and the Sunday. Sunday I try and post around 11 o'clock, but Thursdays I try and post around half five onwards. Um, I try and, I'm trying to get better at organising my filming, editing days, so it can all be all uploaded ready for you guys to watch at home. As some of you know, I work in healthcare. I've done it for nearly three years now, working in homes, and now I've moved to the ambulance service. I've seen a lot of people with different health issues as well. So this has made me think during this time that it was the best time to start my YouTube channel. Even though I didn't feel 100% in myself, I decided I would just carry on anyway. And there was a lot to learn with editing, filming, and uploading and also search engine optimization when I upload my videos so I wanted to get on with it because I thought there's no point if I don't do it now I'm just going to put it off for the rest of my life and keep making excuses why not to. I, I was thinking to do it when I had my shop um, and my business it would have been the perfect time looking back as I had plenty of time and not many customers but I'll be doing a video about my business so you can learn about that more. Um, but because I had the time then, I wish I'd started then. But there's no point having any regrets. You can only do something today for the future. So if, it, if there's anyone out there watching my videos thinking, oh, I'd love to be a YouTuber and do it, I would say go for it. There's no point in waiting. It made me realise this when I work with people with different health conditions. I've worked with people with mental health to people who have na more natural conditions that happen later on in life. It just made me realise life is too short and at nearly 30 I might as well just get on with it and make the most of what I've got because you never know what's going to happen in the future. And I'm all happy now, I'd just like to welcome all my new subscribers. I'm really excited to be doing videos in the future, I've got some ideas and some brands to work with. My next aim is, as well as YouTube, is to work on updating my Instagram more often. The main reason my Instagram looks quite empty at the moment is because I set up Instagram for my business and I didn't have a personal one as I didn't see the point at the time. But I'm going to build that over the next year and hopefully there will be lots of different posts and things to interest people. So join my Instagram and it will just be linked below on my um, home page underneath my channel banner on YouTube. It will also be on my end screen and I'll pop a link in, in this video somewhere. So you can also follow me on Instagram. I'd love to see some of my fans on Instagram and get connected because I'm also thinking to do a giveaway when I get to a thousand subscribers and four thousand watch hours. 
we're nearly halfway there on both of them but I'm going to keep doing videos and let me know if there's anything you'd like to see. I'm just taking out the scones now. I feel quite disappointed in myself that they're not the best really. They're only small but they'll do for work. That was my little vlog um, and my little come cook with me for cheese scones. I thought I'd do a vlog as well with it to make it more interesting with a little chat in the middle of it. Um, because I know most people know how to do cheese scones. Um, I'm going off now to investigate what went wrong and I'm going to work on my cheese scones for next time because I'd like some proper thick ones next time like they're doing um, Marks and Spencer's. So I shall see you all later. Bye!